So what we're going to talk about today, very briefly, guys, is we're going to talk about black and white. How to take your color digital images and go to black and white with them and not lose a ton of quality. There are some definite considerations in this that are rather important. So let's just, you know, I mean, this, this should really be fast. <clears throat> Here's the primary consideration. If you want to go to black and white, it is generally a smidge better, and I mean a smidge, but it is a smidge better to do this in camera raw. Now you may not know if you want to go black and white for your image. Black and white doesn't work for all images. In fact, this one in particular that I'm using as an example, probably not going to be as good in black and white as it is in color. Okay, but you know, maybe. But some will be gorgeous in black and white. Um, <clears throat> but the best way to do it is in camera raw. If you don't know that you want to do it before you move into Photoshop, there's another way to do it in Photoshop, which I will show you in just a second. So if you want to use your, you know, to go to black and white in camera raw, all you've got to do is go over here and you see there's a lot more tabs, okay, that you, you haven't gone to. But this one right, at, right here says grayscale. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to convert to grayscale. There's also, and you can see hue, saturation, and luminance are the three tabs that are in this. And this is, that's what the HSL stands for, hue, saturation, and luminance. So hue is the color, saturation is the brightness of the colors, and lum or I shouldn't say that, no, I said that wrong. Saturation is the amount of color. The difference between a really saturated blue and a pale blue, it's the same blue, just may have more or less of that blue color in it. And then the luminance is the brightness of the color. So I misspoke there. Um, so anyway, what you can do here though is there's this little tab that says convert to grayscale. So as soon as you check that, it'll convert your image to grayscale. Now here's what's really cool though. You still have all these controls to allow you to change things. So, you know, this is a very warm photograph. There's a lot of blues and purples. And when you go in a black and white, the blues and purples become dark grays and blacks. Um, but you can adjust that by sliding these sliders up or down. Look at her jacket. See how that is going brighter, okay? And the purples will do the same thing, so I can make the purples brighter. Now, of course, you have, you know, limited ability, but now I can take the greens in the background and I can try to make those darker. Now, if you push it too far, you can really see it doesn't look so hot, okay? You want to... You want to, usually it's more subtle changes, but I can totally change the background now. I can make it brighter, um, I can make it a little darker, and work in conjunction with each color and kind of change the overall look. Essentially by being able to change the colors, I can adjust the contrast of this image to fit exactly what I want to do. You'll notice that the, the um, saturation and the, and the brightness, the luminance went away. Okay, without that, I can go in here and I can adjust the saturation of just the reds. There's some really powerful tools in Camera Raw that I haven't taught you yet. But for the purpose of this demo, you convert to grayscale and now you can really adjust each individual color and make them brighter or darker depending upon how you want to set this image up and adjust your contrast in a way that's really nice. Now the advantage here of doing this in Camera Raw is that your Camera Raw has more colors in it. That's one of the beauties of Camera Raw is it's got the biggest sampling of colors that you can, you can have. Once you open an image in Photoshop, so let's just say we're done, okay? So I click done and now you can see in the bridge my image goes to a black and white. However, Let's say I've worked on this image like I showed you yesterday. I've done, I've worked on blemishes. I've done this, you know, the healing brush and stuff like that. Now I want to go to black and white. Well, I don't want to lose all my work that I did in Photoshop on, you know, uh, you know, getting rid of blemishes or clone stamp anything or, or whatever. So I can still do almost the exact same thing. The major difference is that you will lose a little bit of data. You do lose a little bit of quality. 
Will you notice it? No, probably not, unless you really push the image beyond its normal range. And also, that's dependent upon how many other adjustments you've done, uh, global adjustments, brightness, contrast, uh, that sort of thing. Remember when we, went, when we went over adjustment layers, I talked about how when you look at the histogram, if you see major gaps in the histogram, that's a good indicator that the image is losing its quality as you're continuing to do adjustments. So you, you do want to watch that. But if you notice here, there is a black, and a, a black and white adjustment layer, okay, right here. And so you can just throw that on top. So let's go here, boom. There's my black and white adjustment layer. And you'll notice it gives you basically the same controls. Um, not quite as many. I think you're short a couple there. But it does give you a similar controls. And so you can adjust things to make the background a little darker okay to try and maybe allow her face to have a little bit more contrast against the background okay so that it kind of starts to to you know pop out a little bit more uh, you can go the opposite you could try and make the background a little lighter to allow the whole image to kind of have a, a happier maybe a little bit more of a brighter feel to it um, you know uh, and then try and put a little more extra contrast into her face. You know, obviously, you can go way too far. Um, but, you know, subtle little changes like that and being able to control those, those colors uh, and, and add the lightness or make a certain color brighter or darker really helps when you're converting it to black and white. Um, so you can just, I mean, there's other ways to convert it to black and white. Um, if I just take, um, you know, and whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to delete the whole thing. Thank you very much. You know, I could take the hue saturation and I could just take the saturation down. So now it's black and white. But I don't really have control over what areas are brighter, darker, that sort of thing, like I do with the black and white adjustment layer. And you could do the same thing in Camera Raw. So if I go back to the bridge and I reopen this in Camera Raw, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't need to use this black and white thing. I can take that out. Um, and then if I just go back here, I could take my saturation all the way down and now it's black and white. But I still just don't have that control. So really the nice thing about what Camera Raw and Photoshop both do with this is this convert to grayscale and then all these different colors that you have here. And yeah, you've got a lot, you've got a few more colors in the Camera Raw slider controller than you do in the Photoshop one. So if you can, if you decide that you want to go black and white with your image, I recommend you do it in Camera Raw. However, there's another complication to that. And that is that after this, let's say you decide, you, you go through, you take care of some blemishes, you do some clone stamp work after, you know, so let's say I say, okay, I'm done, open image in Photoshop, and now I start to manipulate it in Photoshop, okay? And then a couple days from now I go, you know what, I really want to go back to the color version? Huh. You're going to lose all your work in Photoshop. You're going to lose all the blemish, you know, the clone stamp tool work or, or whatever you've done to clean up the image. You're going to lose that. Whereas if you do it in Photoshop, you may lose a little bit of detail. You also lose a little bit of control because it's not as, you know, it's not as powerful, the, the black and white filter, in my opinion. You know, you don't have as many controls here. However, if you all of a sudden decide you want the color image back, you just delete this adjustment layer, and now it's back to color. Okay? The one thing to be very careful of, this is a, this is a good point. I didn't think of this ahead of time. Let's say I do a black and white, and then I decide I want to do a little more clone stamp tool. Watch this. This will be interesting. So <clears throat> I'm just going to, uh, I don't know, let's... I remember I said I wouldn't get rid of her dimple, but we'll, we'll get rid of her dimple. Um, <clears throat> kind to do, there we go. And, uh, you know, um, let's just do some other real quick healing brush tool stuff. And then uh, you're going to see something really interesting happen here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. And there. Okay. So now what's interesting is. If I all of a sudden I decide I don't want my black and white filter and I delete it, no, I want the whole thing gone. 
Thank you very much. Oops. My clone stamp that I was doing was affected by black and white. And so all the cloning, well actually it wasn't a clone stamp, it was the healing brush. The healing brush was making its correction in black and white because it was above the adjustment layer. Um, consequently, it can actually still do the same thing. Um, it can actually do the same thing if you're underneath the adjustment layer, if it is set up um, <clears throat> to sample all layers. So instead of current and below, if it's set to all layers on the healing brush, it will do exactly the same thing because it's sampling all the layers, okay? So then all of a sudden if I turn that off, oh no, it did, it worked. How about that? I was expecting it to not work. Okay, well never mind. In which case, if it's below the adjustment layer, then it works no matter what. Um, but you want to be careful about that because if you're making adjustments, what I find is the best thing to do is <clears throat> to turn off the black and white layer, make all my adjustments first, then turn it back on, and then I can continue adjusting my image. That's me personally, that's the way I work. Y you can figure it out on your own. But if all of a sudden all your uh, healing brush stuff ends up being black and white instead of color, that's why. Okay? Does this all make sense? Excellent. Get to work.